Hello everyone. So I'm going to continue from our last video uh, on simple linear regression analysis. So last time we saw that uh, a simple linear regression model is expressed in this form right here. And we see here that Y can be explained or broken down into two main components. We've got here the mean level, which is your mu of Y is equal to a straight line equation right here. And then we also have our error term component. So that's the epsilon. And we see that the epsilon here is in fact um, taking into account the um, deviation of an observed y relative to its mean level. In other words, uh, an error term here is equal to an observed y minus its expected value for a given x value. Okay, hence we call this here, this accounts for the explained variation in Y, and this here accounts for the unexplained variation in Y. Now, in reality, uh, you know, to, to come up with such a, a model right here, we would need to have all population data available. But many times that is not possible, and so we must use sample data in order to come up with an estimate for this uh, equation right here, right? So, uh, in other words, we are making some inferences about the population based on our sample. And if we are going to make inferences about uh, the population of the y values, then we must identify some model assumptions. Okay, so, so I'm going to talk to you about these model assumptions. So here we have um, our sample of 10 uh, randomly selected restaurants, and we see how uh, for each X value in this sample, we get a different annual revenue. Now keep in mind, of course, that this is only a sample, or if you want a snapshot of what the true population of these restaurants really looks like. So for example here, at um, a population size of 32.3, well, there could be many restaurants. There is a potential to have many restaurants that are located in such areas where the population size is of 32.3. Does this mean that they will each generate annual revenues of 667.2? No, the answer is no, right? So, so in fact, here we see how this, uh, this point we're getting of 667.2 uh, is relative to its expected value for um, a population line of means. If this was a population line of means, then um, hypothetically speaking here, this is where my uh, observed yi value would be for a given, for this given x value of 32.3. It would be, say, hypothetically uh, above my average expected value of y for x equals 32.3. Okay, and, and um, to look at uh, the bigger picture here, well, this is what is really going on in the population. In the population, um, if I look at all possible restaurants and their annual revenues for those restaurants located in areas where the population size is of 32.3 thousand residents, then this is the distribution of the yi's that I am getting over here. So you can see that my 667.2 is not the only annual revenue that can be generated when x equals 32.3. Okay, uh, so another way to, to look at this distribution of yi values for a given x value is is in, in this fashion right here. Let me just, whoop, here we are. Okay, so, so this is how you can uh, picture the, what is really going on over here. So in other words, here what I can say is that um, 
for a given x value of 32.3, I've got here all these different dots. These represent all the possible yi values, all the possible annual revenues that can be generated for restaurants located in areas of population size 32.3 thousand residents. And, and here is specifically, this red dot represents my sample observed uh, annual revenue. This is where it lies relative to the center, relative to the mean level of y. Okay, so we say that uh, the, the yi's for each given x follows some normal distribution here. We've got a normal distribution. And the, the mean value of y for each of these x values here um, is, is expressed as mu of yi. And so this makes sense because in reality, you would expect that most restaurants would be uh, close to or equal to the average value that it should be, right? We expect that most restaurants will generate the average revenue or close to the average annual revenue that it should generate. And then you get some uh, annual revenues that deviate. They deviate from the average annual revenue they should be generating. So some will generate less revenue. Perhaps the management in these restaurants is, is not so good. Um, that could be one reason why uh, they are generating less revenue than expected. Uh, and then you get some restaurants that generate more annual revenue than expected. Maybe here the reason why they're generating more revenue is that the, the service in these restaurants, the service provided is superior to what is expected. Okay, so, so that is what makes uh, some YIs uh, different than others in, in, a, in a set here, in a population of yi's for a given xi value, okay? Now, this distribution here of all the possible yi's for a given xi can also be represented by the error distribution, the error term. So if I look specifically at my example here, now, my example uh, from my sample of 10 observations uh, shows me that my yi is deviating from the mean. If we review the formula for the error, uh, the residual, well, this is what the formula is right here. It says the error term is equal to your observed value minus your mean value for a given x value, right? So clearly here I can see how my observed value yi is different than the expected or mean value of yi for a given x, for a given x right here. Hence there is some, some deviation here, there is a difference. And in fact, when I plot my error term for this specific observation, I see that it will fall somewhere around here. It'll be a positive uh, deviation here or a positive difference. And what about the other uh, yi's? What about all the other population yi's for that x value? Well, they would follow the same idea. So we see here how my other error terms now also are scattered around the mean uh, value of my error terms because the mean value of my error terms is in fact, let me just go back over here. What would my error value be when yi equals mu of yi? Well, my error term would be equal to zero. Whenever yi equals mu of yi, this means that my error term equals zero. And I can see here from my normal distribution of yi's that I've got a lot of yi's that equal mu of yi. Hence, I would expect to get a lot of error terms that are equal to zero. Okay, 
So I hope you can see the connection here between the yi's and the ei's for a given x value. Okay. So, so this is what my error distribution would look like for a given x value. This is what I would get. So it looks a lot like, in fact, it is the same distribution as the yi distribution, except that now my, my error term values um, have a, a mean value equal to zero, right? That is the average value of my error terms. I would expect them to equal zero for each x value that I have. Okay. Now let's look at a, a different xi value. How would that look? So suppose now I'm interested in looking at another x value. I'm now interested in looking at the distribution of the population of annual revenues for restaurants that are located in areas where the population size is of 45.1. Let's just go back quickly to our uh, sample observations right here. So here we have when when x equals 45.1, um, well, the uh, y observation that I picked up in my sample was equal to uh, 810.5. Of course, this does not mean that when I look at all revenues uh, for restaurants located in areas where 45, where uh, the population is of 45.1, that they will also generate the same revenues, right? They, they will, in fact, generate different revenues. So let's look here and see what we get for x equals 45.1. Here we are. So this is the this is the point, the, the observation that I'm getting from my sample. And this one here happens to fall, you know, um, below the uh, average value that y should be when x is at 45.1. Of course, keep in mind that there are other potential um, values of annual revenues for a given x value of 45.1. And these other annual revenues are distributed in this fashion right here. So again, I see how there are many other restaurants out there that are located in areas of population size 45.1 thousand residents, and they are generating different revenues. And again, you can see that most of them, most of these restaurants should be generating revenues that are equal to or close to the average expected value, expected annual revenue. So that most of my points should be concentrated in the middle of this normal distribution. So what can we say in conclusion? Well, we can, we can make an association here between uh, our observed yi's for a given x value and the corresponding error terms. Okay, so here we see how we get different yi distributions uh, for different x values. So imagine that between, between this here, I had all my other x values, all my other um, population size values over here. And imagine that I'm getting all my y annual revenue distribution for each x value, right? What we can take from here is that um, the annual revenues for each um, population size um, falls in a um, normal shape distribution, okay? And the average value uh, for each y is always a point on the population equation line of means. Okay? So keep that in mind. And so from there, we are now ready to make some assumptions. We can draw 
some model assumptions. So these model assumptions say, number one, we say that the mean value of the error terms uh, for each x value must equal zero. So we have seen that in the example that I showed you right here. We see how for each x value, the y's are distributed in a normal fashion. And when we um, map out the corresponding error distribution for these yi's, for a given x value, we see that the average error value is equal to zero. Okay? The second model assumption talks about the constant variance. So the constant variance here tells me that for each x value that I've got right here, I will get a corresponding y i distribution uh, and that distribution will be normally distributed it will be normally distributed with a mean value of um, mu of y um, now if i were to convert that to the error term distribution the error term distribution would tell me that for each x of i i get um, uh, an average value for the error term equal to zero, and further, the, the variance in each of these error distributions must remain constant. It is always um, the same value from one x value to another. Okay, so in other words, in other words over here, the error distribution for, for this set of yi values for an x value equal to 45.1 will, will give me um, a normal shape with a mean value of error terms equal to zero and, and the variance that will lie in that distribution of error terms will also be the, the same variance that I get for an other x value, for another x value such as this one right here, 32.3. I should get the same constant variance. Okay, so, so here what we're saying is that it doesn't matter what x value you're looking at when you look at the error distributions because the variance will be the same for any and every x value in that population. Okay. And then we, we talk about the normality assumption. Well, clearly here we see how the error, val the error terms will be normally distributed for each and every x value. Okay, that is an essential assumption that we must keep here. And finally, the independence assumption, and that is that the error terms um, uh, for a given x are independent of all other error terms for that same x, and they are also independent um, with other, for, for error terms in other x values, hence the independence assumption. So these are the four model assumptions that are needed in order to make some inferences about our population regression model. Okay, now we move on to the standard error. So we've seen before how to compute sample variance, right? When we have a sample, we are able to compute a sample variance. Now we wish to compute uh, the uh, sample variance, if you want, of um, of our uh, yi's, okay, um, and if we can compute the sample variance for our yi's, we can also compute our standard deviation, our sample standard deviation. So let's go look over here again at this table that we've seen before. So here we express uh, the uh, residuals to be um, to be of this form right here. When we take the squared uh, residuals, 
um, we get here these values. So these are the squared residuals for each xi. Uh, they are also, if you want, you can call them the squared deviations if you want. And, and when we sum them up, we get here this new statistic called the sum of squares of the error terms. Okay, or if you want, this can be the sum of squares of the unexplained variation. So here we get a value. Now, keep in mind, of course, this is always for the sample, right? This is for the sample right here. And keep in mind, of course, that we are always comparing um, our uh, estimated yi's to the observed yi's, where the estimated yi's follow this form right here. So, so these y hats that we see right here, these are the values for the y hats. Well, that is as a result of plugging in my estimated uh, line of means, which I obtain uh, by using the uh, least squares line method, right? And so I'm able to get um, a point estimate for beta naught, uh, which is B naught. And I'm able to get a point estimate for beta 1, the slope, uh, which I call B1, right? And so when I plug in this equation uh, for um, each, um, for each uh, observation right here, I get this estimated yi hat. This estimated yi hat will be compared to the observed yi, and hence the residuals, and hence the squared residuals. Okay, so we get at the end this sum of squares uh, for the error term or the unexplained variation. Now, if you remember here, when we were looking at a univariate distribution for x, that is when we were only studying one variable at a time, we computed the sample variance to be uh, of this form right here. Remember, so we looked at the, um, the deviations of each xi value relative to its mean value and we squared them and added the square deviations. And then we divided by a um, uh, coefficient here of n minus 1. This was for a sample uh, variance. And we divided by n minus 1 in order to make the variance an unbiased estimator of the population variance sigma squared. Well. The same idea applies now when we talk about a bivariate distribution for y. Okay, so the bivariate distribution for y uh, will be where we take the, let me just go back up over here, we, we take the sum of squares of the deviations. Okay, so the, these deviations are squared. We are always comparing an observed y relative to its expected value, and we square that deviation, and we, we sum these square deviations across all um, i values. So if my sample was of size 10, then I'd be taking a sum of these square deviations from 1 to 10, right? And that would give me here my sum of squares uh, for the error term for the error term or for the yi's. It's the same thing over here. And so here I get, uh, I get my SSE. Now I want to take an average of this SSE to get my mean squared error term. The mean squared error term will give me my sample variance for y or for the residuals, for the error terms. And so I I now come up with this form, um, SSE must be divided by n minus 2, and we divide by n minus 2 to make this MSE a non-biased estimator of what sigma squared should really be, what the true variance of the population should really be.
So you must divide by n minus 2. n minus 2 here because keep in mind that the SSE is generated uh, by using the estimated yi. Um, the estimated yi or the expected yi uh, that is estimated in my sample uh, is determined by two point estimates. It is determined by B naught, which serves as a point estimate for beta naught, and it is also determined by B1, which serves as a point estimate for beta 1. So in fact here my yi hat depends on two point estimates. Okay, so that is why here I must divide my sum of squares um, of the error by n minus 2 and not by n minus 1 as we see for sample variance, okay, um, and not by n either because here um, I am using sample data, okay, so so in reality over here um, my, my mean squared error uh, for my sample of 10 will be uh, to take the sum of squares uh, that I get in my sample. So here, if you, if you go back to the table, we'll see that the sum of squares of the error terms here gives us uh, 30,460.21. And so I'd have to divide that over here by, by n minus 2. If my sample size here is of 10, then I'm dividing by 10 minus 2 gives me 8. And so this here gives me my sample variance for uh, my sample of size 10. This is the sample variance of the yi's or of the residuals, if you want, of the residuals. So here we are, we get this value. If I have my, my sample variance, then I can obtain my sample standard deviation. My sample standard deviation can now be called the standard error. So we call the standard error here, um, we, we, we equate the standard error to be the square root of the sample standard deviation. Hence, we must take over here the square root of MSE. Okay, and so MSE, square root of that, will serve as a point estimate for the uh, standard deviation of the residuals or the yi's if you want. Okay, and so that concludes this next uh, portion of simple linear regression.